Great, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to present today. Uh, we have no disclosures relevant to this study. Our unrelated disclosures are listed here. So some of this was already covered by Dr. Sachs, um, but gastroesophageal reflux disease affects up to 30% of the Western population. The majority of these patients also have a hiatal hernia, and for those with medically refractory disease, surgery is a safe and viable option. The goal of the operation is to recreate the anatomic zone of the gastroesophageal junction. Several studies have demonstrated that patients with a hiatal hernia and reflux have increased gastroesophageal junction distensibility. In the operating room, our goal is to recreate a valve that is tight enough to minimize reflux while also loose enough to prevent side effects such as dysphagia and gas bloat. However, until now, we have not had an objective way of assessing tightness of crural closure and fundoplication in the operating room. The functional lumen imaging probe was initially developed in Ireland in 2009. In short, it is a balloon-based catheter that utilizes impedance planimetry technology to assess, to assess the geometry of any sphincter in response to volume control distension. At each of 16 electrodes, the cross-sectional area can be measured, and the intra-bag pressure is measured by a solid-state pressure transducer. Dividing the minimum cross-sectional area by intra-bag pressure provides the distensibility index. In the operating room, the flip is placed transorally into the stomach and slowly withdrawn until it straddles the gastroesophageal junction, producing this hourglass image. In the operating room, this is what we see. The minimum diameters at each electrode are displayed on the right. The intra-balloon pressure is reported at the bottom, and the distensibility index is reported in the bottom right-hand corner. Our objective was to determine if the FLIP could detect changes in gastroesophageal junction geometry during hiatal hernia repair and fundoplication, and to answer this question about whether or not these measurements actually correlate with long-term patient outcomes, which to date, as we all heard, has not been shown by any other study. So we queried a prospectively maintained quality database, and we had 175 patients who underwent laparoscopic fundoplication the majority of which also had a hiatal hernia repair. We took measurements throughout the operation and the patients were followed longitudinally uh, by online surveys that are collected preoperatively, three weeks, six weeks, one year, and two years postoperatively. So first we found that the FLIP can in fact detect changes in gastroesophageal junction geometry. You can see here that the final diameter doesn't change significantly from the initial diameter. However, the overall intra-balloon pressure does increase by the end of the operation, subsequently decreasing the final distensibility. This is what we see in the operating room. So after the hernia reduction, the minimum diameter is wider and more distensible. After accrual repair, the minimum diameter decreases and intra-balloon pressure increases, subsequently decreasing the distensibility. After fundoplication, although the minimum diameter doesn't change significantly, the length of the narrowing increases, which subsequently increases intra-balloon pressure and further decreases the distensibility. So our first finding was most significant. We think that the distensibility of less than two is associated with significantly worse gas bloat. At one year, patients with a final DI less than two had worse gas bloat, and then at two years, this disparity becomes even more dramatic. So then we thought, so if a distensibility greater than two means less gas bloat, should we just always aim for a larger distensibility? But we found that when we looked at the reflux symptom index score that there is actually a more refined sweet spot of a distensibility between two to 3.5. So when we looked at a patients with a distensibility between two to 3.5, at one year, they had the lowest RSI scores. And then although the trend is not significant at two years, the, the trend remains the same in that a distensibility between two to 3.5, these patients have the lowest RSI scores. Lastly, we also looked at dysphagia scores uh, and found that they were not in fact affected by final distensibility. Initially, all patients have some degree of reflux, which is to, uh, I'm sorry, some degree of dysphagia, which is to be expected. However, these symptoms improve and resolve by one to two years out. Um, I will caveat this by saying that there have been studies looking at distensibility and dysphagia uh, and demonstrating that a distensibility less than 0 0.5 um, can be associated with severe dysphagia. We do not have any patients that have a distensibility less than 0 0.5. 
There are several limitations to our study. Um, first, although we have long-term subjective outcomes, we do not have objective outcomes such as pH testing, um, and this is definitely an area for future research. Second of all, we do have some inconsistencies in terms of our FLIP measurements. Um, there are a lot of variables such as measuring with pneumoperitoneum, without pneumoperitoneum. We are aware of the significant impact that this has on the measurements. So during our analysis, we were sure to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges, um, although this may have decreased our sample sizes at some instances. And then lastly, there is still a lack of overall standardization in regards to using the FLIP in the operating room. So this somewhat limits the generalizability of our results. In conclusion, uh, we think that ours is the first study to demonstrate long-term outcomes in regards to final FLIP measurements and how patients fare after anti-reflux surgery. We find this to be extremely exciting um, because we think that there's potential here to refine a good operation into an even better one, and that hopefully by reducing reflux while also reducing side effects such as gas bloat, we can use this technology to potentially improve the standard of care and achieve better outcomes for our patients. Thank you for this opportunity. I'd be happy to take any questions at this time.